All right, topic Tuesday. This is from Duke, fourth year medical student, soon going to be entering as a resident in medical school. I'm waiting to figure out where he's going to end up for that. But this week's topic Tuesday is from him, and he is hoping that everybody had a wonderful start to their week. For today, though, that Tuesday, uh, he really thought it would be very helpful to kind of go over some common cough and allergy medications. If you remember last Monday, we talked about the difference between the cold, the flu, and COVID. So they're all a little different. And most recently, I was hearing from a few physicians that more people are actually projected to suffer from the flu this year than from COVID as far as having worse symptoms, that they're finding the worst symptoms will be because of the flu and less from COVID. Because I was asking if I'm going to get vaccinated, which would you do? Because I still have to have shingles. And she's like, for sure, do flu first. Um, there's a lot of people right now, um, and we're not even in the season yet. A lot of people are starting to get sick from that. And then I'll do my shingles last, which is fine. But this is only for reference, this information that I'm going to butcher when I try to attempt to name all of these uh, medications. No way shape is this a uh, medical recommendation. It's an exhaustive list, but really only includes some of the more common medications that you'll see out on the market. But definitely talk to your doctor. If you have the cold, if you have flu, if you're suffering from allergies, whatever the case is, talk to a doctor before you take anything over the counter. Really make sure you've cleared that because there's a lot of ingredients in these medications, a lot that they're actually pulling. They just got rid of Dayquil. And I think they're going to make a new formulary for that because there's a lot of medications that have ingredients that increase your heart rate and could increase uh, increase your blood pressure. So let's get into it. And don't laugh at me because I'm not a pharmacist. And I, I was trying to study the pronunciation and I don't remember any of them. So here we go. All right. Common cough medications to know about. Mm -hmm. Antitussives. I clicked pronunciate on that on my phone. Antitussives. It's important to note that for coughs that are not productive, I mean, you're not bringing anything up, antitussive medications can be used to decrease just the coughing part. And they should generally not be used when you have a productive cough as coughing promotes the mucus to be coughed up, okay? So a tussive, just like you hear tuss, like tussin, robitussin, that's an antitussive. So dextromethorphan, or we're going to go with Robitussin. Everybody's heard of Robitussin. That actually suppresses your cough reflex. And that's happened centrally at the level of the central nervous system. Side effects of taking Robitussin could be constipation, can cause nausea and dizziness. Codeine, that's given a lot of times in cough medicines, and that suppresses the cough reflex as well. So if you're having a ton of coughing fits, this might be a medication. Codeine, you're not going to find over the counter, though. That's going to be a prescription, in which case, if your doctor is giving that to you, then I feel confident it's totally fine for you to take it, right? Um, that, but those uh, side effects could be nausea, could be vomiting, constipation, dizziness. It has a sedative effect to it palpitations, and I don't know what pruritus is. So somebody could look that up because that's one of the side effects. I like side effects in regular layman's jargon. When there's side effects that are in like medical terminology, I don't know what that means. But Joshua, I'm sure you're on that. All right, Tessalon or pearls. I always thought it was P-A-R-L-S. No, it's P-E-R-L-E-S. Tessalon pearls. These are things that uh, you can get in... Uh, I'm sorry if you guys hear my dog barking. She's losing her mind. These are things that you can get in a prescription, but you can also, um, I don't know if you can get that over the counter. I actually don't remember, but that suppresses peripheral triggers of the cough reflex. And the side effects, again, for those could be nausea, dizziness, headache, and an altered mental state. So again, those are some of your medications that help suppress a cough. Okay? Hold on. Ex Pruritus yeah. is... <clears throat> itchy skin. It's chronic itchy oh, skin. Yeah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I do not need that. <laughs> and many in the community know I'm suffering itchy skin right now, which we'll get into before we finish this today. Okay, so that is something that coating can do. And that is correct because I am slightly allergic to coating. So let's talk about allergic. Is it an, an, an allergy to have itchy skin or is it a side effect? These are considered different things too from your physician. So you may want to ask one day, what is considered a true allergy? Because when it's an allergy, they don't want to give it to you again. 
And when is it just a side effect? So a little headache would be more of a side effect and itchiness would show that you have an allergy to something because your, your itchiness could become worse over time. A headache can go away. Uh, sometimes some of these allergic reactions are different than just having a side effect. A stomach ache is a side effect. Um, but profuse vomiting might be considered that you are now allergic to that medication. So that's something to just think about. Talk to your, your physician. Okay. Expectorant. Just like it sounds, this is going to be something that's going to help you get up something, expel something. Okay. Hack something up. And Mucinex is a very common medication. It's actually really good. And you can get now Mucinex for high blood pressure. And you should talk to your physician which type of Mucinex would work. Because again, Mucinex DM, Mucinex D, plain Mucinex, just talk to your physician again before you buy any of these over-the-counter medications. But Mucinex works by increasing bronchial fluid to reduce the thickness that's actually the mucus and the side effects of taking mucus, um, mucin, mucinex. The side effects of taking mucinex could be nausea or a headache. That's the side effects. I've never had any of those side effects taking mucinex. Um, potassium iodide. This is a new one for me. I've never heard of Pima syrup or SSKI or Losat. I do not know any of those, but and they may be prescriptions, but they can increase bronchial fluid to reduce the thickness of mucus. Those side effects could be nausea, vomiting, salivary gland swelling, and tenderness. So that's something to think about. But I don't know where you find those drugs. Um, mucolytics. I did really good on that. Uh, N. Mm -mm, don't know what that word is. Mucomist. We're just going to go with that. It helps to liquefy mucus. It's not often used um, unless you have COPD or cystic fibrosis. So that's not a drug that would be commonly used. Most of the ones you're, gonna, you're going to hear about would be your expectorants. These are typical expectorants that you find over the counter. Talk to your doctor. All right, that is kind of your cold medications. Let's talk about some of the allergies. Very common medications. I'm sure you've heard of at least a few of these. Zyrtec, very common. Claritin and Allegra, very common allergy medications. These are all minimally sedating oral antihistamines, and they are able to reduce itching, sneezing, rhinorrhea. You want to look that one up, Joshua? I don't know what rhinorrhea. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, but they're they're much less effective for nasal congestion compared with a glucocorticoid spray. I'm sure we're going to get into sprays in a minute, but they can be given regularly or as needed two to be like before two to five hours um, before a known allergen. Like if you're going to see a cat, you can take them a few hours before you're going to be in front of a cat. If you're allergic, if you're going to garden and you're allergic uh, to some of the dander that's out there from animals or just pollen, you can take these ahead of time and they'll help uh, minimize any of the side effects of your allergy. Those would be and a form of antihistamine. Okay, uh, antihistamine nasal spray would be a Stepro, Astelin, never heard of these, Pataday, I've never heard of that, or Pantanol, but they are antihistamine nasal sprays. Now, people have asked, well, what about just taking Afrin? Or I think Mucinex might have a nasal spray now, I'm not too sure. So the problem with taking um, some of these uh, nasal sprays uh, is that if you take them too often, they're going to start to swell and cause inflammation. So many people actually get addicted to nasal spray thinking that it works. When in reality, it's really not working as well as it did the first couple times you were using it. So I can't say this enough. Again, with any of these types of medications, talk to your physician. I have always heard that just saline spray is best. It will help um, I don't know how much of an inflammatory effect it really has, but it's totally safe and non-addicting just to use saline spray if you're having a lot of drying in your nose. Okay, Elicon, Flonase, Cinelar, uh, Kenalog, I've heard of Flonase. These are glucocorticoid um, <laughs> nasal sprays. For predictable exposures, consider starting these nasal sprays two days in advance until two days after an exposure. Flonase can be given also if you are just 
really, really stuffed and you need to talk to your physician. I can't even remember all the reasonings behind why I was prescribed Flonase a couple of times. And I think it's over the counter. I'm pretty sure it is now. Uh, chromalin nasal spray. This is administered regular, regularly or is needed ideally 30 minutes before an exposure. It's helpful for brief exposures. Like if you're going to be exposed for a few minutes to a couple of hours for prolonged exposures to things that cause you allergies, the administration of a chromalin nasal spray would happen uh, four to seven days in advance. I've never heard of this. I'm wondering if, if any of you have, I have no idea. But it is important to take these therapies um, regularly. They're gonna be much more effective when they are taken regularly. Uh, however, you need to um, use when needed, might be sufficient uh, for very mild syndrome, uh, sim uh, symptoms, sorry. Um, the adverse effects of oral antihistamines are rare, but it could be somewhat sedating, could cause a little bit of weight gain if you're using it consistently, and it could also cause dry eyes because a lot of these medications are meant to dry you up. Well, that's gonna include your eyes. So you have to kind of be prepared for that as well. And that's why we have, um, we have shared with you all of these common cold and allergy medications. Again, a lot of these medications could cause high blood pressure, could cause rapid heart, weight, uh, heart rate. Uh, you just need to talk to your physician and ask them what they think is best based upon your symptoms. Sometimes it's best just to ride it through and, and let it work its way out. But again, in that case and scenario, if you're so uncomfortable, your heart rate and blood pressure might be high anyway because you're battling a cold or a virus and you're uncomfortable. So let your physician be the one to make the decision at what point do you need some type of prescription intervention or over-the-counter uh, medication and let them tell you what you should use. That was our Topic Tuesday.